everyone. So we just pulled over here to the cannery and load up a little bit of bait. morning. Hopefully good fishing.
got a little bit of prep to do. Uh, get our setting station and stuff hooked up first. Probably like a tub and a half of hooks to bait, so not too many. We'll get, go get geared up and come out and we'll do that. All right, so we're gonna set up our our baiting table and our bait launcher here. hooks now. Got a few boxes of pollock in there. We'll grab those out and start cutting. bend knot. After we launch the buoy we'll pull out uh, depending on depth usually around 50 to 75 fathoms of line and then we'll tie uh, I guess just a little loop knot on the line which the anchor will then tie into and after that we start uh, snapping hooks on the line. All right we're gonna start trailing the line Dad's in position. We have markings every 25 fathoms on our ground line here. That's a yellow one at 25 and 75 and the red one at 50. So that we know how much buoy line we're putting out. There goes red. Kind of hard to see now. They're pretty dirty. Now we'll just tie a little loop knot on it here. Still don't know the exact knot. Close to perfection loop, but not exactly the same either. So, I'll show you guys that one a little later. Oh, 
little sheet bend on the anchor and we are ready. So these hooks, they have a lot longer ganyan. These are similar to what we used to use. First hook, halibut fall season. Let's go. There goes a C-link, which connect our shots together, our tubs. So you may notice I'm putting these hooks into these tubes here of this uh, bait launcher arrangement, what we call the bazooka or a shotgun. Keeps me safe from getting hooked by a, by a hook as it's going out. If you just snap it on the line, they tend to fling around a bit, so that keeps it Keeps it from flinging around and hooking me. Nah, good for the moment. So I was saying it prevents the hooks from flipping around and wrapping on my wrist or anything like that. Very safe and, and nice. Ooh, it just got hot out here. Okay, you can speed up now. Roger. Yeah, we're good. The sash weight keeps the line down on the bottom when we're going over rocky patches. That keeps it from, from being clotheslined like between two rocks, stuff like that. When we're going over rocky edges. So on the menu today we have Octopus, uh, Pollock, looks like a little bit of salmon. Mostly octopus stuff. You might be wondering why I'm grabbing from the other side. And that's just because all the Pollock hooks are over there. It's all, <clears throat> all octopus over here and just a handful of Pollocks over there. So kind of mix it up like that. How is it? You know, all of them use long. Yeah, so we used to just uh, bait them and fold them into the tub when we did use them. This is a little bit easier, but as far as pre-baiting and moving your tubs around, it was like a real mess if you tried to do that, so. Yeah, maybe if you like bundled a handful like three places or something it might not be quite so bad but yeah i can tell that your rhythm is different <laughs> yeah they're they're further apart for sure so i started on the other side of that ridge and went over that little rock and fixing the fall Okay. I'm gonna drag it out towards the middle a little bit towards those two humps. We never actually set gear though. Okay. So, I think that's the reach there. It'll be like one point two, twelve tubs. Uh-huh. Something like that. Cool. Looks like hard bottom so hopefully. Yeah. I don't think it's really rocky, but I think it's hard. Work out just about 
Yeah, cool. Yeah, how far to go now? Maybe another tub, tub and a half. Okay. Yeah. So that was the snap. Now I'll estimate about 25 fathoms of line and we'll put the anchor on it. Okay. Not sheet bend. Let her go. Get our other buoy. Up and ready. Pull out seventy five fathoms of buoy line. A couple of wraps on the on the ring here so I don't fumble the line and let go of it. To the eye of the buoy, sheet bend, and let her go. Alright. Grab our bird line. About 13 on that, huh? Uh huh. I forgot. What do you think over yonder? I think so, huh? Okay. That's one set done. Two or three more. Two or three more. Uh, one or two more. I think probably two more. I think we have the hooks for two more, so. We'll uh, go over to our other spot here and uh, cut the rest of these hooks, get them out. Hey, what you got there? Well, got a fresh coil line here. Uh, this is equal to a skate or a tub and um, three of our shots on the reel. So, 1800 feet, I think, right? Yep, 1800 feet, so it's uh, 300 fathoms, so we'll make 300 fathom shots out of this. We're going to stretch this out on the dock. Um, got a midpoint way down there that we'll run it around and we'll put a mark there and then we'll put two marks at 25 fathoms 
so we know where the spots are on the dock and uh, that, that we always mark our line with and then we can put some tracers on there and when we're setting gear we know uh, how much buoy line to put out because we also use this for our buoy line. So yeah, this is 1130 seconds man line. It's good stuff. Seems to last a long time. Somebody was asking how long this stuff lasts. We've had, uh, we have line on the boat that's over a decade old now. And we just uh, got rid of a couple shots of some Keylon that were on here last year. So uh, this is kind of to replace that and also get a little bit more on a reel. So this stuff has a tag on it, so you know which way to pull it from. So counterclockwise, start from the center. Basically just uh, twist it up on a, on a mandrel, like a tube. And then they take it off there and they, they tie it and wrap it. So yeah. Stretch her out. By the way, we showed the process in closer detail in another video, so a little link up above if you want to check that out. You got a knife with you, Matt? Put on down the line. Um, no, I shouldn't need one. Back here we go. Well, Get a better vantage point. Uh, you might not be able to see Matt way down there. Probably not. loops around and is walking back down the dock while the other worker is ready with his tape Okay, this is just the midpoint here. 50 fathoms. What was that? What did you just mark? That is the end of the first shot. So that's where we'll cut it and drag out the second How long is it? 100 fathom mark. Yep. Now we just gotta do this a couple more times. That's how much of it's been pulled out. Quite a bit. Like this? Whoa, 
Do it again. Oh, it's like one of those workout things. Yeah. <laughs> rain. It is beginning to rain. On each one. Yeah. Here's a little downpour. We'll follow rain. Oh, so that other halfway mark was wrong? No, the halfway mark is right, but this is the quarterway mark. Oh. Appreciate that sound. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it is actually like drenching. Use tape inside out. That's pretty weird. Wake up, man. I think that's the first time I've ever done that. Just witness historic event. So that is just a mark to know where to put our 25 and 50 fathom markers. Take some time to put those together and we'll get back to it a little later. We're gonna go haul our gear here in about an hour, so we just want to get this stretched out. This is a little bit of uh, if I go over the light. This is kind of low. Double time. This is double time. Oh, did I say double time? I meant triple time. <laughs> Look at this guy <laughs> going over the light. Whoa, where'd that huge pile come from? Cool. One second it was just a small pile, now it's a huge pile. It's true. Indeed. One worker has finished coiling. The other one continues with his pretty cool setup. Oh, your girlfriend is back, Tristan. 
Oh yeah. I invited him over. Why'd you burn the end? So it doesn't fray when I gotta splice it and mix it together. That would be wise. Yeah. Now you can use black tape too. Some line you have to use black tape because it won't burn. This is a poly though so it melts like plastic. The link. Sea link. Put them together. Mm -hmm. That's how we join all our lines. What's that tool? It's a fid. That's what we use to splice line. <laughs> I like to get these pretty tight so they're not too floppy. So we'll just probably go in about right here. So you just want to keep these in order the way they're twisted. Under, over, under, over. A lot of times this first one, I will tuck it before, I should say the third strand, because it'll lay in there tighter. So this kind of line, um, we usually just do two tucks and a taper, that's plenty. Because uh, this line is very tight, very tight lay, it's twisted tightly, so there's a lot of resistance there, it's never going to pull through. Oh. And we taper the line so it just doesn't hang up on stuff as easy. It'll feed through a pulley easier. Like our level lined up there, it comes over the rail nicer. So yeah, that's two tucks already on each strand. And I'll just taper, I'll just taper all of them so they actually get three tucks and a taper, I guess. So you tuck them going one way and then you taper them going the opposite way. 
So now if you look at these in a line, we'll taper this one and that one. So this one will get one tuck, this will get two tucks, and then you'll end up with three of them in a row. One tuck for that one. One tuck for that one. One tuck for that one. I'll give them a little trim and burn them again, and that's that. Let's go see what Matt's doing. What you got okay. there? Just tucking this yellow marker into the 75 and 25 fathom depth range. Oh. So I'll come back and tuck that line all the way. It's gone. Just getting it. To the bend there, and that's where the 50 fathom marker goes. Uh huh. That's what it looks like after it's been trimmed. Not sure if that's really focusing. Why do we mark these quarter and halfway? We mark these for a couple of reasons. Number one, we use this as our buoy line. So we have a mark at 25 fathoms, a mark at 50 fathoms, and a mark at 75. The middle mark, the 50 fathom mark is red, so we know that we're at the middle of the shot and the other two are yellow, so no matter which way you pull it on, you know that you're 25 in. And so when we go to set gear, if we're in, say, 60 fathoms of water, and I want 75 fathoms of buoy line, we just let it out to the first yellow mark. And uh, I should say the last yellow mark, and then we can tie our anchor on, and we know we have enough buoy line on it. And the other reason is if we get hung up and we end up breaking off, we can have a fairly good idea of how far we were in on that tub or that shot of line before it broke off. Uh -huh. So yeah. That makes sense. As you can see, we don't have much line on our reel right now. Pretty bare. We're gonna fix that in about an hour. Yep, we gotta gear up the water soaking. What you doing? Well, hopefully, 
getting a good perspective here. Getting set up for our viewers? Hopefully. Let's see how it goes. Might be a little floppy. We'll find out <laughs> in review. But that's good, I guess we'll be seeing it. <laughs> one and two on there. Oh. If you can see the green bars, that means they're on. Okay. Good to know. Nobody went over things with me. Okay, that's going to start twisting up on the reel there, Matt. Mics are gonna fall off. Yeah, just like knock it off. Yeah. I didn't even. Well, I don't know why that one fell off. I didn't even bump it. There's no like detent or anything. There's no. Looks like it's already about halfway out. Yeah. Is if I turn it, is it gonna fall? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. to the anchor, right? Yeah. Come up any moment.
here in the Blond Canyon, I'll say that. Yeah, that was a good spot. stuff so I don't really think it's I think in the bait's probably okay. Slow. I think these fish just haven't moved in here yet. Yeah, and they do too. Really... Sometimes like we usually don't fish here yeah. this time of year and we've had good fish in here and a, a week later they're gone or or vice versa. You don't catch much and then a week later they're just in here fit. It's just hard to say. Yeah. The tough thing is not having fresh bait on any of this gear to rule out that. Which means we'll come back to the spot. Most, 
Most yeah, likely. we're still fishing later, but now I guess we'll just try somewhere else. Yeah. This little corner right here can be weird, too. Yeah. yeah. Miss, huh? I, yeah. I guess we'll see on the next set, huh? Yep. See what yeah, those ones seem to have more consistent results. What say you, T? Anything? <laughs> what do you think of those ganyans? Uh, <laughs> Are they too long? Yep. A lot easier pinning them in the tubs like over there, huh? Yeah. Actually, what we used to use back in the day before we before we swapped to those kinds. We probably are better for bigger fish. I mean, our catch fish is so. It's just easier for us to manage in there. Yeah. Really well, the other ones are so slippery on the main line that, you know, you just pull on them and they come and twist it easy because it's not braided. we have better results on the next one. Yeah. Blues. We will not know for sure until tomorrow when we have some fresh bait on these hooks. But we won't be fishing here either, so there's that also. So our buoy set up right over there, so we're just about done here. Then we have three more sets in the water. Two of them are just short ones. And kind of some hard rocky bottom. They're deeper. I wish that we'd put some gear up shallow. I don't know. It's hard to yeah. say. I'm kicking myself. Yeah, that was good. Run it high. <laughs> The other spot that we fished in there been good shallow right there, so... Yeah, that's what I was thinking at the time. It's like, oh, it's not good back there. And then right up there. Anyway, there's something down ideas. there. I don't know if it's a skate. It's a hell of a thing. Nope. I see big wings flapping. Oh, wow. it looked like a hell of it the way it turned for a minute. Damn, it's so monstrous. About 80 pounds. <laughs> you guys are so respectful to the resource. Yeah. Uh, Those guys are hard to deal with. Yeah. They can't <laughs> get off the hook when they're that big. Noisy seagulls. Trying, huh? Okay, guys. Or shall I wait until the anchor comes up? Yeah, probably not real point. No, okay. I guess we'll pick you guys back up on the other sets if they're good, so. 